Hey everybody, today we're going to do some work on the boom mower. I've used this thing really hard and in a couple places I've hit a rock and I hit a steel post. So I thought I would take this thing out. The mower sections actually look pretty good, uh, especially as hard as I've used them. But I thought I would take it out today and replace a few sections just to show you how it's done and you know talk a little bit about sickle bars in general, not necessarily just this boom mower. So to change these mower sections, we need to take the entire knife out. I probably should take just a minute to talk about the terminology used in a sickle mower. The knife is usually defined as the entire set of cutting sections, the part that slides back and forth and oscillates. One of these, which fits in there, is called a section. They have the burrs there on them. And these pieces here are called guards. And then these guards keep the knife from encountering anything that it shouldn't hit. Unless, of course, it fits between there. I really like these um, little magnetic bolt holders or tool holders or whatever. You can put them pretty well anywhere. And they'll hold uh, your parts while you're working. And they're actually available for free oftentimes at Harbor Freight with those little coupons. You, you know, free with any purchase or whatever. Now, I wouldn't recommend them holding them sideways like that, but you can see that it does work. Looks like there are three bolts holding this cover on. Now, obviously, I'm doing this just for fun, guys. I would actually store it over here somewhere out of the way. We're getting ready to send it back now, so I want to do this little bit of maintenance before we returned it. The nuts for the first bolts were locked in there, so that allows you to be able to take them off without reaching the back side. The next step is to remove this plate. This is kind of the skid plate. I believe there are four bolts on this. You can reach the back side of it, so the nuts are just regular nuts. Well, they're lock nuts, I should say. Folks often ask why I don't use an air impact wrench, and the reason is so I can talk to you guys. Typically try to put the socket on the nut side of a bolt so that you don't have to turn the bolt while you're loosening it. The only time I break that rule is if it's, well, significantly harder to get the socket on the nut side of the bolt. So in this case, I could easily reach the back side so I put the socket on the nut. But you can see this next one here, I can't, I can't reach my socket in there. So I'll use the socket on the bolt side. You know, for most of you, that's really elementary discussion and probably kind of boring, but I'm realizing more and more as we have this channel that there's a lot of you that didn't grow up around any mechanical stuff like this at all. So please excuse my uh, sometimes elementary discussion. Rotate the cutter bar until it is parallel to the ground. Support the outer end of the cutter bar with a stand or hoist. Remove four bolts from the clamps for the blade bearing housing. Yeah, that's right. I need to remember that those were on there pretty tight. Now it says to rotate the crankshaft. Now I'm going to take a little break here to show you something I didn't understand. We can see the knife moving here. Now obviously this is a place you want to keep your fingers away from. It's nice since it's hydraulically driven that we can drive it by hand here. But on this knife, the guards and the sections both move. And that provides a little more cutting power. The only thing we're trying to take out is the knife part. We're leaving the guards alone for this particular maintenance. For number one, I don't have any replacement guards. Number two, I didn't damage any of them. So I don't really see any reason to work on that. It's usually less frequent that you have trouble with a guard than with the sections. The sections are a lot more fragile. Well, that's why they're guarded, I suppose you could say. Okay, here's an up close of the bottom side of that clamp that we were taking off. Now the book says to rotate this to, the, to its uppermost position to try to get this out of the way, I think. So there, that's probably where we're gonna be. Okay, we're just gonna slide that baby right out of there. We now have the knife in hand. I'll give you some up-close views of those sections. That one's the one that I believe that I hit the steel post with that one. And that one's a little damaged. Overall, these are in pretty good shape. I wish I could show you right in this video all the stuff that I went through with this thing. That would explain a little bit why it's like it is. Okay, so I have three replacement sections on hand. So I have to choose the three worst sections 
and I'll use this little soapstone here, Harbor Freight soapstone, I should say. I'll identify the worst three. Those two are definitely bad. That was probably the, the worst remaining one. Okay, I'm gonna center punch right here on these old rivets. Because the documentation says to drill through them. With a quarter inch drill. Quarter inch drill bit, I should say. There we go. I actually don't know how far I really have to drill before it'll punch out. I'll first try this piece of steel right up here on this because I don't really want to bend over. But I may have to put it on the floor. Hope you're getting that. I don't want to have to do it again. As is typical, I'm being a little bit lazy here, right? I need to be on the ground where this would be a lot more solid, or I just need a better surface that is really solid, like an anvil or something like that that's attached to the ground. Well, I don't do much of this kind of stuff, so I'm kind of making do. We have our sections out. We'll clean this up just a little bit. And then our new sections will go on just like this. Let's take a look at what it looks like from the bar side. Yeah, I didn't do real good on that. I kind of marked that up a little bit. I'll take a wire brush to see what it looks like after that. Okay, so I shouldn't have been beaten off quite like that, huh? No damage though, it's not bent or anything. It's just scuffed a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna put the new rivets in. We're gonna do this upside down, but we're gonna put the new rivets in like that. We'll put the section on. Okay, I'm gonna do the rest of this right here on the floor because it'll be so much easier to pound this. Like that. Now there is a tool available. The part number is listed in the boom mower manual from Ventrac to be able to crimp these without having to hit them. Um, I don't have that tool, so I'm going to use the old fashioned way. I think I'll put in my hearing protection. Okay. That's got them down. Now, the book says to make a point of making sure that these are not sticking up at all. Well, I've tried to hit them good and hard and they're still sticking up. It says if you don't get them all the way down to go ahead and grind them a little bit. So we're gonna do that. Okay. Now you wanna check to make sure before you get that far, that if you've put those rivets on like I did, make sure those sections are not loose. The rivets should clamp the knife tight to that bar. But I think this looks good. While we got it out, we'll take a look at this bearing, make sure it's good. It's good to me. Now we would check while we're sliding this in here, if there's any binding or anything, that might be an indication that we didn't get our rivets uh, ground off enough or smooth enough and I don't feel any. It feels pretty good. So these little clamps, I want to make sure that I go up at the same rate on each side. Otherwise they seem to get a little cockeyed. That's kind of a technical term I guess, isn't it? Anyway, I want them to be even on both sides. That should be pretty even. It may not be perfect. Now this is the kind of job you don't want to use an air impact on. A little bit more detailed work. Oh, that looks really nice see good from here. I know you guys can't see, but trust me, I'm going to take that thing up as evenly as I can. Now these were pretty tight. I mean, I loosened them with this 3 8 ratchet, so I'm going to tighten them up at least as tight as it took me to loosen them. It's probably a good rule of thumb all the time. It might not be a good rule of thumb. Sometimes things are tighter after they've sat or maybe rusted or something like that, but in this case, I think it was in pretty new shape. Okay, let's see what it looks like. Pretty straightforward, huh? You might ask how this got a little rusty in here. Well, I got it down in the water. I wonder if that did it. It probably did. 
we were working along the water, it was hard to keep it right out of it. And I suspect that's what caused that. Don't think it's going to hurt it. Give us a shot of grease while in there. This thing's really an expensive attachment, so it, it is going to require a lot of thought for a lot of folks to buy it. Now, the, the thing that's cool about it is the specialization of it makes it such that it can mow things that just can't be mowed any other way. And I shouldn't say any other way. Some of them could be mowed with a 200 horsepower tractor and one of those big long booms and everything, uh, but that just isn't going to work in a golf course application or any sort of a city application where you can't fit such a big rig. I had several applications myself where we were able to use it and couldn't have used, I don't believe, any other mower. Any other practical mower anyway. For instance, I was reaching way out over a pond in one video mowing some pretty large stuff, maybe 10, 12, 15 feet. I don't know how far this thing reaches, but all the way that it would reach out over the pond mowing it without any issues. I had another situation in another video where we mowed very vertical area that had big rocks sticking up in it. In that situation, we just couldn't get Vinny over the edge with the tough cut mower. It was just too steep. And then had we done so, those rocks would have really been difficult for us to work with. Boom mower was fantastic for that. One other place that I couldn't have mowed was way up high. In addition to the price, there are some downsides. It's very heavy on the front of this unit. So while you can mow some really unique areas that can't be mowed anywhere else. You can't do near the slope with the unit itself that you can with other attachments. What I found was that the weight of this thing would tend to pull the front end downward if I was on a really steep slope and it made it very difficult to handle. Again, I don't think that's the normal purpose for this mower. Uh, if you're typically mowing a slope, you're going to use the tough cut, things like that. This thing is for reaching out, maybe mowing on hedges, trimming a hedge row along the side, over the side, on your side. Incredibly effective for that. But like any specialty piece of equipment, it's going to have its own limitations and its own quirks. If you do have a long row of hedges, or if you have a pond that you need to reach out over that you're having trouble getting with a, any sort of a bush hog or something like that, and you want a vent track, this might be the unit for you. It's possible that this may be available for rent in your area. The place to look would be your local vent track dealer. A lot of dealers will have a, a rental fleet and have learned that this, a unique device like this is perfect for rental applications. That might be a good way for you as a homeowner or a, you know, a small business to utilize one of these without having to pay the entire purchase price to get it. I will say that this unit combined with the Tough Cut, so far I didn't find anything I couldn't mow. Okay, I think that about does it for this project. We got everything back together and ready to go. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit about a sickle mower and how that works with me replacing these sections. Hey, if you like our videos, press the subscribe button, press that little bell I think that they have beside it to get notified of every new episode. Check out our website, tractortimewithtim.com. We have a lot more in-depth information, things that may cover videos that you just haven't had time to watch. You can read that at your leisure about the attachments that we have for Johnny and Casey and Vinny. Just a bunch of pre-purchase questions that we go through that we get often. We try to uh, handle some of those in the website, places where you might want to ponder them on your own time. We do appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim.